Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Now that Unity have made Bolt 1 free in the Asset Store and they've confirmed that Bolt 2 will be free, I decided to do some more videos on it. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Bolt State Machine. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Unity. Now, I've kind of shifted around my window so that we have a place here for me to work in the graph. And so we have the game animator and scene view up here. Okay, so what do we have for this demo? Well, we've got the player. The player simply has an animator that plays an idle animation. That's all it does right now, it's just something to put on the screen, okay? We're going to be writing a state machine that does stuff with the player, depending on which state it's in. If you haven't got Bolt installed, or you don't know how to, check out my previous video on Bolt. I actually showed how to set it up. That was just before they actually announced that it's going to be free. So at the time, I didn't know that it would be free and that, you know, loads of people would want to probably have me do tutorials on it and jump on board. So now it's free, you can go ahead to the Asset Store, you can add it to your assets, and then come and download it in Unity by going to the Window Package Manager. And if you go to My Assets, once you've added it to your assets, it'll show up on here in a second, it's just obviously loading. Okay, and we have Bolt here, you can import it. And as I said, in my previous video on Bolt and Visual Scripting, I actually showed you how to install and set it up, so I don't need to do that again in this video. Okay, let's get into it. So a state machine, okay, I'm, I'll assume you know what a state machine is, but just in case you don't, if you actually look at the animator, which I'll assume you've used before, okay, you have different states. So we have the entry state, which isn't really a state, it just is basically when you start, go to this state, right? So this is really the starting state here. And I can have other states, other different animations, and I can have these transitions, these arrows that go between the states. And then on the transition, I can say, you know, what causes it to transition. But with the built-in animator, you're limited to just having, uh, so I didn't mean to add a new layer, sorry, let's delete that. If you go to parameters, you can add different parameters, floats, ints, balls, and triggers, okay? And then you need to write your own script that change those values to actually drive the animator, which is okay for some animation, but what you actually want to do most of the time when you've got a state machine is not have any of this. This is kind of designed more towards animation, but a lot of state is not animation related. And even if you are doing it for your player character that has animation, you can still use both of these. I'd use Bolt for doing the logic and then simply have Bolt tell the animator to change those values for the animation. It'll make more sense the more you use it. We're not doing an animation example this time anyway. Let's go over to our player, okay. So last time I showed you Bolt, we made a machine, okay, a flow machine. That's for having nodes. So if we go over here and press new, okay, and let's just for now just chuck it in tutorials, Bolt state machine, macros, and call it test, okay. This will now make us a, basically a script, right? We have start and update and you can do whatever you want in here, okay. And this is just like a mono behavior in the sense that it's on, it's like a component on here and it runs. But with state machines, you want different states that run at different times. So instead of this, we'll remove the, the flow machine and I'll actually delete this, this test machine I just made. We're actually going to instead use the state machine. Okay. And I'll do the same thing where I make a new state machine and I go chuck it in uh, here, here, and we'll call it like player state machine. Okay. So I've made this for the player. And by default, it gives us one state. Okay, and this state is where it starts. If I made a second state by right clicking and clicking flow state, I can then make this the starting state by toggling start. Okay, I'm not actually sure what happens if you have multiple as your start state. I guess I'd advise against doing that because you know you don't really want that in a state machine. Um, and right now there is no starting state, so let's put this back on. Okay, so what it means is when I start, okay, this is going to um, happen, all the stuff in here, which is currently just the enter callback, the exit callback, and the update. Okay, so obviously when I press play, both of these are going to start happening. This will be fired, whoops, sorry. This will be fired once, and the update will be fired every frame. But it's only every frame that this state is active. So if we have multiple states, you can have logic in those states that you only want to run whenever, and then you can have transitions. So just like how I showed you in the animator, we have these transitions. Okay, we're going to set some up here. So let's start. So to make our state machine, let's start off with an idle state that does nothing. It's just where we start. So we're going to make a new flow state, open it up, and I'll make this full screen. Okay, let's call it idle. And we don't want anything, so let's just get rid of this. Go back from full screen. And if you are still inside here, you can go back to the root by clicking where it says player and has these icons. Okay, you can click this. And here we have our idle state. And we start here and nothing ever happens because it's empty. Okay. So let's make one of our other states. Now, if you're building a full character, you might have jumping and swimming and all these different states, or with your UI, you might have different menu pages. But for this, we're gonna have a state called invisible, okay? So what we'll do is we'll make the invisible state by going over here, and we'll call it invis, 
evolve. And for invisible, we don't want to do every, anything every frame, at least for this example. But we want to do something when we enter and when we exit, okay? So when we enter, we want the player to go invisible, and when they exit, to come out of invisibility. And then all we need to do is tie these two states together so that we can go from idle to invisible and from invisible back to idle on different conditions. And those conditions can be whatever you like. So how this works is I can right click on idle and make a transition to invisible. And what it'll do is it'll make this thing in the middle, which is the transition, which you can then double click and go into. And this is where you write your logic for when you should transition. And by calling the trigger transition method, it actually will go from this state to this state. And in this case, we also want to be able to go back. So let's make a transition back to idle. And now we have two, and obviously the arrows show you which direction. So this top one is the condition to go from idle to invisible, and the bottom one is to go back. So let's first get the transition set up so we can actually watch it in the editor. We can, we can watch the graph while we're playing to see it going from idle to invisible and back. And then once that's done, we can actually have the logic in invisible. So what we want to do is we want to say to go from idle to invisible into here, what do we actually want to do? This is completely down to you. Whatever it is that makes your state change, you put in here. This is the logic for it. I'm going to really simply just make it on a key press. So if we go to events, input, and then keyboard input, let's say, let, let's leave it like this. When the space key is pressed down, trigger the transition. Simple. Now, obviously, this is as basic as it can be. You might want it to be, you know, checking the player's health when the health goes below a certain value, then trigger the transition or whatever, right? It's up to you. You just end up calling this whenever you want the transition to happen. So when I press the space key. And obviously, this is a one-way thing. So when I'm in the invisible state, it won't actually check for that to take me back. And you can watch this in action. So if we press play now and give it a second, it'll actually show us that the idle state is active. Okay, it just does a refresh. Idle is active. When I hit space now, it goes across to invisible. You actually see the little animation for that. But when I press space again, it doesn't go back. And if I quickly reset this and press play again, I can go into the, the little keyboard transition here. And what I can do is I can actually watch this. So when I hit space, this is going to happen. It's going to go across here, showing that space happened. But when I press it now, it doesn't actually show anymore. So it's not even checking for it, which is really nice. It only does the thing when it's in the state to do so. And we want a way to go back. So I'll go into here, make it full screen. And let's do some different inputs. So let's say um, in the input on mouse input. So when I press the left mouse button down, let's trigger the transition. Okay, like so. And then we go back. And here you see we have the keyboard event to go to invisible and the mouse event to come back. By pressing play, we can now watch the full changing of states okay so we start off in idle give it a second and we hit space we go to invisible and we left click and we go back if i click left click now nothing happens so i go space left click space left click and so on and so forth and now we just want something to happen in invisible because when i press these keys now you'll actually notice if i hit left click this goes hit space this goes left click this goes but nothing is actually coming out of here so now we can write our logic for when we enter the invisible state so obviously for going invisible, you might, you know, write your own invisibility shader of some kind, but to keep this simple, I'm just going to disable the mesh renderers. Okay. So I've got the two skin mesh renderers, one for the joints and one for the surface. So we need to be able to access these in our code. Now we could just do the, you know, get components method, which will grab them fresh every single time, but we can just cache them. It's a lot easier. So on the player for the variables, let's add a variable called renderers like so. And then we can set the type to be renderer. And we don't just want a renderer, we actually want a list of renderers. So down here, list of renderer. And then we can add two, and we want the joints and the surface, okay? And now by doing this, if we go back into our graph and we go full screen, and we go to the invisible state, on our object, these are the variables we have access to. We have access to, well, it's just one variable, which is the list of renderers. And I can drag this in and here are our renderers, okay? This is our renderer, or our list of renderers. So what do we want to do? We want to loop over them. So let's make a for each, okay? So we can say for each loop. Whoops, I clicked off it. For each loop. So obviously you pass in the list to this little thing here, and then you call the for each when we enter the state. And these different things here. So exit means, you know, what happens after the loop has been done. Body is every single iteration of the loop. Index is obviously how many how uh, 
how many times we've done the loop, and then item is the actual element in that loop. So for looping over all of the different renderers and wanting to disable them, what we can do is we can go here and we can say um, renderer dot enabled because we're wanting to set this to be false, right? So we see renderer dot enabled set and the renderer is the item. We want to set it to be false and we call it every time here, there we go. And that's it. And then we want to replicate that on exit state. So let's grab these three and copy paste them over here. Okay. We call it here. And the only thing we do is when we exit, we actually enable the mesh renderers instead. Okay. And now if we go out of full screen and go back here and press play, let's watch it in action. So we're in idle and I hit space and we go invisible and I hit left click and we come back. Let's enter the state and actually watch it happen. Okay. Let's press overview to get it to uh, shape like this. So if I hit space now, you actually watch this gets called, it grabs the renderers, it does a for each loop, and for each item in the loop, we set the renderer to be disabled. And then when we exit, when I left click, okay, it exits the state, it does a for each loop with the renderers, and instead it actually just sets them to be enabled instead. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. I hope you're enjoying Bolt as much as I am. Thanks always for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Bearded Eye, Benjamin Hilder, David McDermott, Dustin Miller, Jake Nixon, John Selig, Joris Letter, LN, Matt Fryer, Rene, Sam Marcus, Fabian Reno, Malvin, and Rack. If you'd like to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, then it would be greatly appreciated if you could check out our social media links down below, go follow us on Twitch, Twitter, join our Discord, and check out our course on Udemy. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.